I'm going to try to go through kind of in detail what I do and then talk technically about some uh, issues that I like you to know um, when you're uh, bringing me your art. And then um, we can get into specific questions. Um, so uh, we are talking about gicle printing. Uh, gicle is a, a French word that means to spray. And that's exactly the gicle printer that, that we use is uh, just ink being sprayed onto uh, a media that, uh, that you choose to have your artwork printed on. Um, we uh, kind of, I like to kind of meet with an artist and kind of get a feel of uh, what you're looking for in your reproduction. Uh, we have several different uh, medias that we print on. We can print on canvas um, and some fine art papers. And uh, we use um, archival links and um, we have archival papers also. But, um, and I can go through that with you uh, when we talk about the different medias that we, that we print on. And then we also offer um, the, um, the certificates of authenticity so that that can go along with your G clay print. So um, the process is, is that I kind of meet with you and uh, we, we talk about what you're looking for. Uh, you can, um, whatever kind of art you do, whether it's uh, watercolor, pastel, oils, acrylic, whatever, um, we can pretty much photograph and make a, a, a high res file of uh, any of those pieces of art. Um, also, um, what I ask that you do is if you do varnish, that you wait until I photograph uh, the work and make a, a high res file for you before you um, put the varnish on there because that adds a whole nother challenge. It's not that I that I can't do it, but it's it's just a lot easier to do it without all the uh, the glare on on the work. So um, then once we meet and and we can make the um, the large high res file, then uh, we decide you know we talk about the media that you want it on, and then I do a proof for you. So that you can see it's a small proof that you can come and take a look at and uh, see what it's going to look like on that particular um, media and then uh, you can approve it or you can you can ask me to make adjustments and now with the digital age we have a lot of control over the adjustments we can make and um, so I'd like to hang on to your originals while we um, do that color management and proofing process so that I can um, compare uh, the proof to your original and um, get it as close as I can. So um, once that happens and you approve uh, the proof, then we uh, go ahead to the final print to the size that you want. I can give you um, borders. Uh, if you, uh, you know, wanna have it ready to frame and we can put it, uh, um, then put a mat around it. Uh, I can give you any kind of border that would work for you um, for, for your framing purposes. And also we offer stretching, uh, we can, stretch for you on standard bars or gallery bar. And um, we can uh, print the wrap for the gallery if, if you want us to do that too. So that's all part of the process. And, um, and, and, and I'm here to, to just give you the, the product that you're, you're looking for in the end. I wanna talk a little bit of detail with you um, and I don't wanna hurt anybody's mind, but I just kinda wanna go over some of the um, details of, and help you try to understand um, the formats and uh, the pixels and things like that, that, that I, I, I want you to be able to understand so that you uh, know, even if you bring me a file, that it's gonna be big enough for us to make a reproduction. So I'm gonna share my screen with you for a minute here. And um, Steve, if you could cut me on to do that. Uh, which one are you trying to share the, um, the file formats? Okay. Yep, that's good. Okay. Okay, so um, what I want to just talk to you about a minute about is high resolution and low resolution. Of course, when we do printing, we want to print from a high resolution file so that we hold good detail. So um, the high resolution is uh, an image that's pretty much to the size that you want it to be printed at 300 PPI, which is pixels per inch. Okay, so when you're looking at a file and you look at the size, it's going to give you uh, inches and then the, um, the uh, pixels per inch. And so we want to at least be um, at 300 PPI for a good reproduction. Um, low resolution, um, that's what we normally would uh, use to um, look to upload something on our website. 
um, because it's uh, that's what our screen is going to show us anyway. So we don't need to have anything higher than that on our website because it would take it longer to load. So we just want a lower resolution to put on our website or to email to, to people so they can um, see and it can go through the email pretty easily. Um, so just keep that in mind. 300 PPI is high resolution for reproduction and then 72 PPI is for, uh, for web and to email. Okay, so the next ones I wanna talk to you about are the formats that I work in, which are JPEG and TIFF, okay? Um, JPEGs are generally another, um, th these are compressed files. So when you open a JPEG, it uncompresses, and when you close it, it compresses. And um, so that's why it's smaller and, it's, and you're able to email JPEGs because um, it's a compressed file. Um, also, those are good images to use on our website because um, they are small, smaller in size. Um, can you scroll up a little bit, Steve, there? I mean, I can't quite see it on my screen. Okay, so um, the TIFF files are um, uncompressed files and they are good for um, reproduction. So if you're gonna do a book or if you're gonna do um, G Clay prints, uh, we like to work from TIFF files because those are uncompressed, larger files and they are good for um, reproduction. Um, so I kind of just wanted to go through that with you so that you could understand um, file formats that we, we like to work in. Now we can work in other formats, but those are our main formats that we work in. And when I, do, when I uh, make a digital file of a painting um, for anybody that brings it in here, what I give them back is a high res TIFF, a high res JPEG, and then a web JPEG. That way you, you have just about every base covered that you need to uh, promote your work. Okay, um, then I wanna talk to you a little bit about pixels. There's a little math uh, involved here. Um, Steve, can you bring up the other, the other one? Okay, so, um, so when you ever go check properties or size and pixels of um, your files, um, this is just, I'm trying to explain the math to you so you understand it. Cause I know when we first got into digital, I had no idea what these numbers were but it, they, they make sense mathematically. And I'll, I'll do something that's pretty clear here for you just to see. So up at the top here, you have um, your pixels um, at 72 DPI and then pixels at 300 DPI. Now DPI is the same, or that's dots per inch. And what I was talking about earlier is PPI, pixels per inch. Or, so it's, it's the same, pretty much the same process, but look down here, we're gonna go with the 10 inches down here. Um, if you go across and you see that the pixels uh, at 72 DPI would be 720 pixels. So you just take the 10, multiply it by 72, and you get 720 pixels. Okay, so if we go to the high res version, you go over to the uh, next column, you do 10 times 300, and that gives you 3000 pixels. So now when you look at the properties of an image and you see 3000 pixels, you know that that is a high resolution image at 10 inches. And so, I hope that makes sense to, to everybody and um, I can make these sheets available for y'all to, to get from me um, and I'll be happy to email them to you or Steve can and, and, and but it's just it's just um, math that uh, I, I like y'all to know so that you know kind of what size images if you bring me a file that you're bringing me okay all right um, so I kind of wanted to um, give a lot of time for questions because I, I know that if you haven't done this before that you, you can um, it, it's kind of new and kind of uh, unfamiliar and uh, I like to just uh, be open and answer any kind of questions now another thing too for the Charleston Artist Guild um, I'll just tell you we, we do offer 15% discount off your printing so that's just uh, another incentive to, to come and see us but um, let's uh, let's uh, let me answer some questions for you Okay, uh, Rick, we have one question uh, from uh, Larry Gale, I believe. Uh, what, are, what is the camera that you use for image capture? Okay, Larry, how you doing? Um, well, what I use is, uh, I use the Nikon D800E, which is a 34 megapixel camera. 
So um, I shoot everything in raw and, um, and in my color space, I use Adobe 1998. And then um, from that point, I work from directly from the raw and then um, I can take it to the format after that. Okay, and I have another question from Paula Borset. She wants to know if you photograph their work, we so they don't need to worry about the pixel size. Is that correct? That's right. I'll handle all that for you. Um, I'll take care of that and make sure the file is large enough for us to do a high resolution image and a high a high res reproduction. Um, and also, too, if if you have questions about that. I, I, you know, I work with a lot of artists and I don't mind sitting with you and, um, you know, if you have to enter a show or have to send your files somewhere and they have to be a certain size, I'll be happy to work with you on that and, and get that to them through email or through a transfer service. All right. And Debbie Pointner wants to know, is a Jaclay print on canvas waterproof? Um, what we use a waterproof canvas, um, and I've tested that a little bit, not uh, not a heavy amount of water, but what we use is a waterproof canvas, and just rubbing it on there does not smear the canvas or smear the ink at all. And we have a lot of artists um, that paint over what we do, and uh, that works fine also. Okay. Um, and do you know about the Giclée, the law of, um, I don't know if this really applies, but do the Giclées, are they accompanied always by a certificate of authenticity or does that really matter? Well, um, I imagine um, if you are going to offer a limited edition print um, and, and it's, a, it's a, a reproduction, a Gicle reproduction, normally it's accompanied by a certificate of authenticity. I don't know that it actually has to be, but um, that's just a, a normal practice in, in the reproduction world, that, that in the Gicle reproduction world. Okay, and I also um, did some research, and maybe I'm trying to answer my own question, but I think the, the laws of South Carolina State that if you do have a Gicle and you have it priced at $100 or more, you're supposed to have a certificate of authenticity. Uh, you're required to. But and you say that's the law? That's, that's the law? In South Carolina. Okay. Uh, and we, you know, they yeah. CAG abides by that um, in, in the gallery too, during you know sale. Okay. Um, do you, let me see, somebody else has a last question. Okay, Kathy Parker wants to know, do you recommend Gicle for smaller size like note cards or is that necessary? Um, we've, we've done smaller size Gicle's, um, not a whole lot. I mean, normally our smallest one is probably around an eight by 10 size, um, but you certainly can do that. Um, it, it, I, I think that um, the reproduction I mean, whether you go get note cards, that's one thing, but reproduction and on a G clay, whether it be a canvas or a fine art paper, it, even small, it looks nice. Okay, and the questions are coming. Uh, Ted Hinder wants to know, how do you develop the image? Uh, do you use Photoshop? Yes, 100%. Photoshop is our go-to program. All righty, and Debbie Partner wants to know, would a matte varnish protect it from water as well? Absolutely, absolutely. All right. I have several artists that spray um, when I get done. I use a, um, a satin canvas, um, so it's not a real gloss and it's not a real matte, but I, the artists that like a real matte will put a, a matte varnish on it and it works very well. All right, and do you print on, uh, say you want to reproduce a watercolor, do you print on watercolor paper? We have, uh, we call it a, a textured fine art paper, which is, just like a watercolor paper, and that's a cotton rag paper. Okay. Andy Wessels wants to know, do you have any suggestion about lighting and white balance setting if we photograph our artwork ourselves? Yeah, you just want to make sure that you um, have even light um, over all of the painting, and then just make sure that your color balance on your camera matches the, the, the color balance of the light that you're shooting in. Um, we have we have control in Photoshop to change that color balance, but it's nice to start out because if, if you're bringing me a file, I'm not going to have the original to work with. 
So I'll have to go off what you give me and we can proof that and we can make adjustments from that. But um, if you, uh, if you shoot it in the, in the same, in the color balance of the light you're shooting in, then, then it's hopefully will be close and we'll have a good start with our first proof. All right, and do you have a price sheet available for different types of surfaces and sizes? Yes, it's on my website. And that is, um, just go to rickroadsphotography.com. Um, the only thing I have on that website is the price list now. And when that, t when that first page pops up, just hit at the bottom of the page, hit price list and, and all the prices will come up. All right, I have a question from Michelle Ivani. How large can you print? Okay, so the, the, my printer is a 44 inch printer, but I need a little room on each side. So 42 inches on the small side is um, my limit of printing on the small side, 42 inches. Okay, I uh, got another question uh, from Ted Hinderer. What printer do you use? Okay, I'm using the Epson 9880. And it uses all ultra, ultra chrome inks, which are all um, archival inks. I think when they came out with Gicle prints uh, in the first, at the first of the process, that they were claiming that the color fastness was good for two or three hundred years. And I was trying to figure out how would they know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because what I um, I I've, I've gone and, and talked to many people about you know the longevity of this product. And um, they have certain testing ways that they uh, put it in uh, certain um, situations where it, it simulates aging. But um, I, um, I, I err on the safer side and, and maybe give it about 75 years. Cool. But like you say, the, the products now are getting better and better and, and more, more archival. All right. Are there any other questions that uh, you would like to hear? Okay, I have another question from Debbie Pointner. Uh, how does an artist know how the difference in the quality of the canvas if inks and printing uh, from one other, one another? Well, I think you just um, just ask them the the technical questions. Ask them if their if their media is archival and if they are using archival inks. Um, some people may use third party inks. I'm not a believer in that. I believe in um, everything being archival um, and that I use the inks that are made to go in my printer because and, and the papers um, because I don't want to do anything to harm the head on my printer and I want to make sure that the inks are um, trustworthy and um, guaranteed by the company that I use. Okay, any other questions? And I, I have samples here of all the media. So if you want to come by and just take a look at the, the, the canvas or some of these the fine art papers, the, the smooth fine art, the textured fine art, and the enhanced matte paper are, are the main ones that we print on. Um, there are different prices. Um, and um, I'll be happy to uh, you know, show you some examples. And, um, and then, like I say, when we're in the process of working with you, you will see a proof. Um, on that particular paper before we, uh, we, we print your final and make sure you're happy with it. Okay, and I have a question from Michelle Bonnie again. If we're painting or if we're printing our own small cards on stationery, do you recommend a particular printer? Well, um, I'm sure there's plenty of good ones out there. Um, I'm an Epson fan. I, I use, I've been using their products for a long, long time and I have had good results with that and I trust them. So I would recommend um, looking into a Epson photo printer and uh, I think you'd be very pleased with that. Okay, we'll see if we have any other questions. I'm gonna wait just a second. Yeah, sure, I mean, I, I know that um, when, when I was making the, the transition from film to digital, it was mind blowing because I had no idea. The first camera I got was only a six megapixel camera. And, and that turned out to be a, a 10 inch 300 DPI file that was coming out of that camera. Um, now we're, we're, we're much more advanced and um, the, 
I'm, I'm much more, I have much more knowledge about the process, but it is, it can be very challenging, very confusing, but um, I'm, I'm very willing to work with you to help you understand, you know, well, and sometimes you don't even have to understand it. If, if you let me take care of the, that di uh, the, the digital image part, then you don't have to worry about it. All right, and I have another question. Do you print note cards or business cards? I do not. We only do fine art printing. Okay. All righty. I don't know if there are any other questions at this time. Hey, Mercedes. Hey, how are you? That was wonderful, Rick. Um, if you anybody you? has any last questions, you still can pop them in. Oh, sorry, I, I, I cut you off, Rick. What was, I was just going to say, do you feel you understand a little bit better? <laughs> I do. I Good. do. Good. I do. Thank you. Um, I've, I've seen your, uh, when you had your studio before, you once showed us how it was all done in the process. It was very interesting. You could actually do a field trip with that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. I've seen work of uh, done and it is very, very good. Very good. <laughs> so uh, I hope everybody enjoyed this uh, and now understands a little bit more about Gicle and Rick Rhodes, I think is between the best that we've got here mm -hmm. and probably far along too. <laughs> so I would recommend it and think about him and thank you for attending this evening. <laughs>